Alright, so anyways, I have a balloon, and I have a match. And remember I told you you can cover your ears like this, so it'll make it not sound as... Whoa! <laughs> okay, so that happened pretty fast, right? And it happened pretty loud, so... So there you go. So certain things heat up very, very quickly. They don't take a long time to heat up. All right, so anyways, welcome back. We are uh, going to be doing a lecture. This is called Specific Heat. All right, let's get rolling. All right, so anyways, specific heat. This is probably something you guys have probably never heard of before. Um, however, you would you will kind of feel like it makes sense, I think. All right, so you probably have never heard this exact term before. But like I said, this should be something where you have experiences before. This is not something that should be totally shocking to you. Okay, so first of all, specific heat. Let's get a definition of specific heat. The definition of specific heat is the amount of heat energy needed to increase the temperature of a substance. At this point, that probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you, and that's okay. This is, you know, science-y terms. This is not something that I expect you to just all of a sudden go, oh, yes, indubitably, I understand. All right, so specific heat is the amount of heat energy needed to increase the temperature of a substance. Different materials require more or less heat to raise its temperature by one degree, all right? So it depends on what you are trying to increase the temperature of, yes. So different temperatures require more or less heat to raise its temperature by one degree. So if you're trying to raise the temperature of a block of copper versus a cup of water, it's gonna take different amounts of thermal energy to increase the temperature of each of those substances. So if you look at this diagram here, which substance do you think heats up faster? All right, is it a kilogram of gold or is it a kilogram of water? Take a look at this diagram, uh, what do you think? Gold, gold is going to heat up much faster, the same mass, it's a kilogram of, of gold, heats up much faster than a kilogram of water. It doesn't take nearly as much energy to make the temperature go up of the gold as it does the water, all right? Can you think of any other substances that heat up quickly? Well, besides gold, yes, copper, steel, all right? So all of these things, they all happen to be metals, okay? These are things that you guys are familiar with. This is what, what's known as low specific heat. That means that the object will heat up quickly, all right? Low specific heat, the object will heat up quickly. And that almost seems kind of backwards, but if you think about it, it kind of makes a little bit of sense. So low specific heat means it doesn't need a whole lot. A little bit of difficulty hearing me, but I'll. Certain things heat up very, very quickly. They don't take a long time to heat up. Metals are a really good example of that. Uh, air. Air is another example. You just saw that in action. You, uh, air, like a hot air balloon. You guys have seen that. If you heat up a hot air balloon, the, the air expands. Um, sand. You guys have ever been to the beach? You guys have probably experienced where uh, the sand is super hot and you're like running across the sand. Ah. All right, then you get to the ocean, you're like, ah, all right. Um, you know, here, this person, they burnt their foot. Um, several years ago, I learned about Kings Island, like when you go to the water park, to make sure you wear like, like flip-flops or something, right? Because that cement gets hot, all right? It heats up quickly, much quicker than, than some other things in the area, all right? So a desert, often will heat up very, very quickly. You associate a desert with high temperatures. But the thing is, is low specific heat items, they will heat up quickly, but they're also gonna cool off quickly. All right, so like for example, you have this pot. Has everybody seen a pot like this where it has like uh, two different kinds of metals? Yeah, and there's a reason for that because those two different kinds of metals, they can heat up at different rates. So in this case, they have copper on the bottom and the, and the uh, aluminum on the side. Here's a, here's a clip that kind of demonstrates that. This is a demonstration of thermal expansion. What I have here is a bimetallic strip with one type of metal on one side. It looks to be brass or bronze and another type of metal on the other side. These two pieces of metal are attached, adhered to each other So I'm heating on both sides to convince you that 
I'm not cheating by just heating one side and having it expand. So that is a bimetallic strip. Okay, where are you going to see that in action? Does anybody have or you, a thermometer that you like leave out in your garden, like outside? You guys ever seen those thermometers that look like almost like clocks? They're usually round. And then the you guys have seen those? Inside of those, there's a bimetallic strip, just like you saw there. So what happens is as the temperature increases outside, part of that metal strip will start bending more, will stretch more than the other metal. And then that's how the thermometer knows what the temperature is. Does that make sense? It's actually kind of clever. Um, so uh, does anybody have one of those at home, by the way? Okay, nobody has one, but you see, oh, you do? So, uh, so now when you see that in action, you'll understand that there's actually a, a piece of metal inside of that that allows it to know the temperature. Now, this is a picture of a desert very early in the morning. What do you notice about this? It's kind of weird. This is a desert. It's pretty. Okay. What else? Yeah, there's frost on the plants. Okay. And the reason why is we just kind of talked about that a little bit. So the, the sand heats up super quick, but it also does what? It cools down super quick. So when the sun goes down, the desert can get quite cold. And here you even see frost is uh, forming on the plants. Okay, well, all right, I'm going to light this amazing sciency candle. All right, so here we go. There's a sciency candle. I'm going to blow this balloon up. This is a different balloon. This one's bigger. Should I go bigger? No. Is this good enough? Is this good enough? Yeah. Bigger. 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 So you might want to... I was traumatized yeah. as a child. Okay. Oh, never mind. Let's see if it stays. There we go. Nope. <laughs> stay. I didn't think of that. I made it too big and it's not going to want to stay. All right. All right. So anyways, the timer is gone. Let's say it's probably been about 10 seconds. Now it's probably been about 15 seconds. <laughs> okay, so that, so that was about 20 seconds. All right, so it, it, put the, it blew the candle out too. That's, that's kind of neat. All right, so about 20 some seconds for the balloon to pop. Hey. Now, we can do kind of the same thing here, but we're going to use a different substance in the balloon. All right, so what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to water. Yeah, make a water balloon. Oh, water. Okay, I'm gonna... How are you going to clean it up? How are we going to clean it up? Yeah, it's going to splash. Well, I got paper towels. Can I have another? That's why I have like all my stuff on. Can I have a balloon? No, not right now. It's, it's, it's super science material. All right, candle check. If you just just don't bump the camera, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just want to make sure. <laughs> wow, that's smoky. <coughs> wow. What's that? Um, I think it's fine. I mean, if you want to sit by it and look at it, you can. But it's just don't don't bump it because I think it's set up pretty well. Yes. To make it fair, I'm gonna blow air into this just so it's bigger. Okay, I just don't want to have like you know six gallons of water in this one. Oh yuck! <laughs> I didn't think this through very well. All right. Are you gonna try to pop it? There. He's gonna fill it with half water, half air. That's more than half air. Okay. Okay, that's pretty good, right? Okay, the other one lasted 25 seconds, roughly. What what are our predictions here? Oh, it's going to pop? 30, 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 37 seconds. 37 seconds. 37.5. Ooh, she wrote. 37.6. 37.6. 37. You guys would be good at the prices right. All right, so let's see what happens. I'm scared now. We're going to pay 30. All right. 
Timer starts now. I'm scared. There you can see it. I'm terrified. I'm Okay, it's at 30 seconds now. 30? It's going to scare me. Hey, all right, let's see. If it's already there. Okay. There we go. Okay, we're at one minute now. Yeah. Oh, like, do not film me when we're at one minute. Right. Okay, while we're waiting for the balloon to burst, here's here's a slide. High specific heat will heat up slowly. High specific heat will heat up slowly. An example of high specific heat is masonry or brick. So here you see this guy uh, who is making an oven out of bricks and mud. Um, so this is a traditional way to make an oven. And you can make things like charcoal with an oven like this, uh, or you can cook things. You can make uh, uh, ceramics. You could make uh, tiles. All right, so, so like clay tiles you can make. All right, we're we're closing in on two minutes now, folks. <laughs> uh, you can probably relax. You can probably relax. Um, I don't know, maybe. It, 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 yeah, it was kind of it's kind of a trick. I mean, it, it's it's still going, and it's it's probably gonna go for a while. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as, soon, yeah, as soon as you guys are like, hey, no problem. So uh, like this, you may have seen an oven like this, like at uh, Carabas. Carabas used to have a wood burning oven. They it, it broke and they decided not to fix it. I was talking to the guy there. Um, but this is a, a pizza oven, and some people might even have something like this in their backyard. Does anybody know somebody who has uh, like a, a brick oven in their backyard? What's nice about the, what about a brick oven is that it's those bricks. Once you get them hot. They tend to tend to stay hot for a long time, and you can use them to uh, bake bread, pizzas, whatever. All right, so high specific heat things will heat up slowly. Um, a really good example is water, and we're seeing that in action right now with our balloon. So with the water, me adding the water, that water is absorbing a lot of that thermal energy. That candle is heating up the water, but it takes a long time. For the temperature of that water to increase high enough. Uh, yes, Connor. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what time we're at now. I mean, it's probably close to five minutes. Well, let's just let it roll. We'll let it roll. Does anybody need more time? Okay, moving on. Swimming pools. Anybody have a swimming pool at home? Okay, well, several. Okay, cool. All right. All right. So if you have a swimming pool at home, you're probably going to relate to this a little bit better. So let's say I just fill up my swimming pool today. Now, I'm not talking about the chemicals and stuff like that, but because you could. I mean, it's clean water. I just put clean water in there. Is that a good day to go swimming? Why? It's going to be super cold, right? So when you put uh, water in the pool, it's usually super cold, all right? Much, much colder. And what, what about the second day? Is the second day a good day to go swimming? Usually not. It's still cold, isn't it? All right. It takes a long time for that water to heat up. Even if you have a heater, it takes a long time for that water to heat up, okay? So high specific heat will heat up slowly and it will also cool slowly. So like, for example, uh, you see this uh, metal pole. This is a flagpole. You guys seen this clip? This is from a uh, Christmas story. All right, the double dog, Gary, right? What does he do? Like puts his tongue on the flagpole, what happens? He gets stuck. That actually happened here several years ago. <laughs> Um, I remember there's a girl, she did this to the, the flagpole out in front here, right, right out front. Uh, yes, Peter. Yesterday I was playing outside and my gloves got really warm. And then when I went to pick up an icicle, it stuck to my gloves. Yeah, you guys have probably experienced that, like where the ice you start sticking to your gloves. Absolutely. So, uh, so once water gets hot, it stays hot for a while. Metal heats up quickly, but it also cools down quickly. All right, so it's a lot safer to lick a tree than it is to lick the flagpole, right? Okay, I don't know why you would lick a tree, but if you're going to do one or the other, you want to lick the tree. Here we go. Here's the clip. Still gone. 
All right. So yeah, don't try this at home, kids. And here's kind of a more sciencey clip. Uh, by the way, I don't know what we're at. We're about a little over ten minutes now, I think. Ten minutes. Yeah. So I brought with me some liquid nitrogen here, and what we're going to do is see how well a pipe like this aluminum pipe can conduct heat. Okay. But, but ni liquid nitrogen is cold. It is very, very cold, but this pipe has some heat from the room. Okay. Okay, and heat in its mass. And if we drop it into the liquid nitrogen, Whoa. it's going to make the nitrogen boil vigorously. We're going to get this great plume wow. of nitrogen squirting Yikes. out the top of the pipe. All right, how as, about that? As the pipe begins to cool down, okay? Turn, my pretty. <laughs> All that heat energy going right down into the nitrogen, okay? Yeah. Nice. Getting your nitrogen to boil. Now, Tony, what I want you to do is put that glove on, that cryo glove. I'm going to put this on. And you're going to flip the pipe over. If you can, like, carefully pull it out and then invert it. Not fast. You no, know, it's yeah. Just be careful. Okay. There's some nitrogen there, so don't okay. splash us. Just put it back down in. Again, that end of the pipe was very hot. Wow. We're conducting some heat from the room into the liquid nitrogen. I can even feel it through my even glove. Even through the glove. Now we're getting the pipe really, really cold. I triple dog dared you to stick your tongue on oh, it. Oh no. Should yeah. I? No, Should no, I no, 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 no. Why don't you pull yeah, the pipe no, out of the nitrogen right. <laughs> and just lay it on the table? No, yeah, it's, it's very, very cold. And luckily for you, I brought with me some tongues. I brought with me <laughs> some pig tongues. No! Okay? Now, <laughs> that's, a, that's a really interesting question, though, right? Of what happens if you have a tongue that has some saliva oh. on it and you apply it to a very cold device? Now, don't try this at home. That's why we have the stand in oh, tongue here. Oh, man, I didn't even get a chance to warn anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's happening here? Tony, why don't you go ahead and lift that pipe sure, up? Sure, sure. And lift it vertical. Okay, lift all, it the all, all the way up. And oh. I think what you're going to see oh, wow. is that the tongue will sort of stick. Yeah. And what you don't want to do, <laughs> if this happens to you, you don't want to pull the tongue away too, oh. too quickly. Oh, you ripped it off. Because you are going to rip some tissue off your tongue. And we actually talked to the Toledo Fire Department about this. And it's kind of a little bit of a myth that they get calls about tongues sticking to poles. Oh. Okay, but it will. <laughs> it definitely will. So don't try that. And if it does happen, here's what you do. You get some warm liquid and oh, you just apply some warm liquid. The tongue will come off. Does it matter? Don't stick your hands or your tongue or anything on something that's very, very cold in the winter. Right. You'll freeze that water. Your flesh will be stuck to it, and you don't want to be in the situation where you get frostbite, like no. on this. So yeah, <laughs> you don't want to do that. Okay, we're we're at gosh, let's see, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty some, twenty some minutes. All right, it hasn't popped yet. Here's something, especially if you have your own pool, but if you don't, maybe you have had this opportunity to do this. How many people have sw had gone swimming in a pool at night? Okay, it's a, it's kind of a different experience, isn't it? Because it, it, the air, have you ever had this experience where you're in the water and it feels warm and comfortable? You get out of the water, all of a sudden you're freezing, right? What's going on there? Well, same thing, okay? So let's say it's an 85 degree day. You're out there, it's swimming pool, feels really nice. The pool water is probably going to be close to 85 degrees, right? All right. So with the temperature's warm in the pool and outside the pool. Nighttime comes, the temperature drops. Let's say it drops a lot to 70 degrees, all right? The air temperature drops quite fast. What happens to the water temperature? Is it going to be 70 degrees? No. Okay, why? Yes. What do you think? Because what's true about water? Ding, 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 ding. It takes a long time to heat up. Therefore, it also takes a long time to cool down, right? Okay, so, so the temperature of the water is going to still stay around 85 degrees. Let's say it drops down to 83 degrees, not a big deal. However, it's warmer in the pool than it is outside the pool, okay? So next time you swim at night, think about that, all right? It's, it's not an illusion. Some people are like, wow, it's weird. I don't understand. The water is so warm. Right? Well, it's because it is. This is another thing. If you live near a uh, pond or a creek or maybe you on the way to school, you drive by a pond, you guys ever notice that early in the morning sometimes you get this effect? All right, what's going on there? Same thing, all right? The water stays warm. What happens to the air temperature? Very early in the morning. Is it the warmest time of day? No, it's cold because the sun has been down, right? So the air temperature is low. That water temperature is still warm. We might not know about this, but water evaporates. As that water evaporates and hits the cold air temperature, it's, it's going to condense and form that fog, all right? Here's a, here's a clip. If you want to sing along again. Yeah, you, you guys at home, you can sing along too. This is 
snow outside. I don't know how it goes. The snow outside of the mountain today. That doesn't make sense. No. <laughs> that's that song no you would go. Body on the mountain tonight, not a footprint to be seen. Oh, the kingdom of isolation. Wait, let it go, let it go. <laughs> all right, I, I, I definitely made a mistake there, but all right, so anyway, so those are things that you should know. Now, if, as you notice, the balloon is still there, still surviving, still hanging in there. Here, here's a quick. Uh, yes, yeah, so. Why is it, is it safe? Like, I'm hot to the end of class. It may not. It, it may not. We'll see. Can I pop it? Um, I don't know. We'll see. Can I have a balloon now? Maybe. Wait, 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 hold on. Right now. All right, so a review. So let's real quick. These are, this is a review of some things that you guys have learned. The ability to do work is a defined definition of what? No. Just going to say that. No. No. That's not the definition of no. The ability to do work is the definition of? No. Working. No, yes. Energy. energy. Ding, 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 ding. Very good. All right. So the ability to do work is energy. The more energy particles in a substance have, the, the blank they move and the blank apart they will be. The faster, and farther. The faster they move and the, the farther. farther apart they will be. Very good, guys. All right. So as you increase the temperature, they're going to move faster and they're going to spread out further apart. Okay. I can't read. Okay. You're trying. Total kinetic and potential energy of all the particles in a sample of matter is called what? This is total energy. That's the clue. So total energy. Yes, Peter. Thermal energy. Yes. All right. Good job. Thermal energy. All right. So thermal energy, the total we're looking for there. Increase thermal energy in two ways. We can increase the number of blank and or we can increase the blank of the particle. What can we do? How can we increase the thermal energy of a, of a substance? Um, increase the number of particles or the energy of the particles. Okay, you're really close. You got the first one right. So hold, hold on, hold that thought. So if I increase the number of particles, it's kind of like this. If you, if, if we had one person, if we have Sadie stand up and start walking around with her eyes closed, she's going to bump into tables, okay? If we have, then if we have Sadie and Zoe do the same thing, are, is there going to be more bumping in or is there going to be less bumping in with two people? More. So the more particles we have, the more bumping around we're going to have. Yeah. Now, the other thing we can do is what? How can we make Sadie bump into more things? She's walking around. What can we do? Yes, Cameron. We could add a TV in the middle. Okay, we can add more stuff. But what, what can we do to her? Yes, Peter. We can make her walk faster. Yeah, make her start sprinting. All right, she starts sprinting around with her eyes closed. All right, she's going to hit more stuff. Well, we, but she will hit with more force, won't she? Okay, so we can increase the number of particles, or we can increase the speed of each particle. All right, now here's the next one. Now this, this is the key word here. Average kinetic energy of article, all particles of substance is what? Yes. Guys, come on, let's go. We, we got to know this. Wait, what's the question? Hey, guys, this is going to be on YouTube. You guys can be show how, what, what a genius you are to your parents here. Average kinetic energy of all particles of substance is what? The key word is average. Average. Yes. Yay, temperature. All right, here we go. We've got two more chances. Shh. The movement of thermal energy from a substance of higher temperature to one of lower temperature. That's conduction? One. Nope, it's not conduction. It's a good guess. All right. It's the movement of thermal energy. Thermal energy? No, it's not thermal energy. The movement of thermal energy. It's only heat. All right. Oh, wow. The amount of heat needed to increase the temperature of a substance is called what? Specific heat. Ding, 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 ding. All right. So, there you go. So, we're looking at the uh, candle over here. It's still going. I'm kind of curious. I'm not sure how to Just pop it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm taking a risk here. I'm going to touch this. I'm going to touch this because I want to see how warm this is. Please don't pop it. I don't want it to pop. Yeah, it's, it's it's not even that warm yet. Are you serious? Yeah, believe it or not, it's really not even that warm yet. So I mean, I can I can feel the heat from the candle, but the balloon itself is not. Yeah. Good point. Okay, so we'll let this go. All right. The, the camera's been rolling for 32 minutes. <laughs>
How, how long is that? It's gonna be like about 33 minutes. I don't trust that thing anymore. Oh, it's gonna put out the candle. No, it's gonna put out the candle before it pops. I think it's gonna put out the candle. The water might put out the candle. Yeah, it's gonna put out the candle before it can before it can pop. I wonder if that water's warm. Yeah, it, it kinda is gross, actually. If it pops, I'm going to it, it's not really, really warm, but it is a little warm. I'm going to pop. Purple. Purple. It's cold. It's, 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 it's